again back here in the VIP Podcast Lounge doing a little bit of an overtime session, overtime download here because there's some important stuff going on. There's a lot of important stuff going on here at the event, but there's also a lot of important things happening outside uh, in the world. We're going to talk about both of those things uh, with a couple of great people who are here this weekend. We're lucky they're here because they can open and shed some light on some of these issues, especially regarding what's going on uh, in the world of cryptocurrency in the Bitcoin world as well, and more broadly, talking about the future, the future of a lot of things, society, money, whether we're going to have certain opportunities going forward. A lot of that hinges on what's going on right now. I want to give you both a chance just introduce yourself real quick. Mike first. Okay. My name is Michael Middleton. I own a firm in California. Our company name is Protax LLC. I've been a consultant for, you know, 33 years, um, did very well. I uh, discovered Bitcoin way back in 2012, uh, maybe 13, um, and invested or heavily. So I've been following Bitcoin for a long time. Um, I only use the term Bitcoin because there have been forks of it since. And uh, to me, Bitcoin is all that matters. So I'm talking about, in general, the concept of Bitcoin. Um, and so I've been in this space for a long time, but I've been kind of quiet about it. Um, but now I'm, I'm coming out um, and I'm trying to educate as many people as possible about the importance of Bitcoin. Because in my world, Bitcoin is going to change the world for the better because it's a truth machine. Um, I saw it a long time ago and it's coming out now and now the whole world's finding out about it. But we're still very early. And so I ran into this fine gentleman next to me, Raphael, and he, we, we are very like-minded. Um, and so I asked him if he could come over and he, and he agreed. No, I appreciate that. And we'll, we'll talk about, I know you got a lot to say about a lot of important issues here, but yes, uh, Rafael, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi there, yeah. My name is uh, Rafael Verde. Um, I'm the co-founder of the Crypto Vigilante, also the co-founder of the VIC, the Vigilante Insiders Club. Uh, I've been a Bitcoin miner. Um, I've been involved in venture capital, and um, I've been in Bitcoin since like 2011, 2012. Uh, I've, I've been through the two civil wars. In Bitcoin, I'm very intimate with everything that has happened throughout the Bitcoin throughout Bitcoin history, and I I'm pretty attuned to what's happening right now with uh, with with Craig Wright and the in the court case that you guys want to talk about. Let's talk. That this is a big trial that's going on. For those people who aren't uh, aware of the trial or don't understand the story behind it, if you can give us a very brief synopsis of what's happening, who is Craig Wright? Why is he significant? And why is the outcome of this particular trial going to be important, uh, whichever way it goes? Um, you want me to take it? You want to take it first. All right. Um, um, well, um, before I get started, I would like to like get, let you guys know that I personally believe Craig Wright is Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, based on my study of Bitcoin um, and corroborated by all recent events where all of the scaling within BTC itself is now one that is mirroring what BSV is doing. So uh, the civil war that took place in Bitcoin history was one that revolved around scaling on chain and embracing Bitcoin's computational power. Where Bitcoin is more than a coin, but it's also bits. It's a Turing complete machine. In other words, a computer, a supercomputer. Craig Wright explained this in 2015 in what they called the All-Star Panel with uh, Trace Mayer was there, Nick Zabo, and he explained to everyone nonchalantly how Bitcoin was turning complete. Um, many things happened in 2023 that after I had a lot of suspicion that this man was Satoshi Nakamoto, I, it was just obvious to me that he was because now people in BTC are saying that BTC is also turning complete and as if they had discovered this in 2023 when Craig Wright himself had said it in 2015. So my idea of who Craig Wright is comes from my personal study on Bitcoin, not just what they want me to learn about Bitcoin, what mainstream crypto media sponsored by venture capital and big tech wants you to think about Bitcoin as what Bitcoin is, according to them and their definition. And no, I come from a group of Bitcoiners, and Mike does as well, where we saw what Satoshi gave us in its totality and we approached it with reverence. For us, it was a reverent thing. 
the entirety of the crypto space can be broken down by one question. Do you think you know better than Satoshi Nakamoto? And could you dis and if so, could you create something better than Satoshi's original design? The vast majority, I'd say 90% of the crypto world is based on people who, in my opinion, arrogantly say, I know better than Satoshi and I can create something better than him. I'm sorry, <laughs> but most people don't even understand the, what the fullness of Bitcoin is. Um, and and those, those of us that took more of a re re reverence towards Bitcoin, we are still digesting what it is and, and it honestly is the most grandiose of designs in all of crypto. And that in spite of it being the first technology given to us, it's still the best. So Craig Wright has a good buddy of his who we, we learned helped him create Bitcoin Dave, named Dave Kleiman. He passes away at a young age of 46. His brother Ira Kleiman inherit, inherits his estate. He realizes he has access to all of his brother's computer. His brother, along with Craig Wright, wrote the textbook used in all faculties throughout the world on computer forensics. He realizes in looking at what's happening that his brother was involved in the creation of Bitcoin. Dave Kleiman, his brother that passed away. And he sees the correspondence that he had with Craig Wright. So he sees that Craig Wright is also was also part of the creation of Bitcoin. So he then he sees that there's a big some Bitcoin wallets that he doesn't have access to. Craig Wright, he reaches out to Craig Wright. Craig Wright helps him try to recover those bitcoins that belong to his brother to his late brother david but then ira goes into this whole thing of like well if my brother helped create bitcoin then i am also an owner of the satoshi bitcoin so he devises a plan and it seems it was a, a plan executed by a lot of other people um not just ira himself but now it's coming out more and more that there was other people involved with this issue where they started going to the to Gizmodo magazine and Wired magazine, and they doxed Craig Wright and Satoshi. They pulled Satoshi violently out of his privacy. Yes. They it, it that was that was like a, almost like a rape, really. Yeah, so they for tried to unmask unmask the mystery. Well, right? well, they actually did. And and for any any person out there that enjoys his privacy, imagine being doxed. And this is happening at the moment when. Ross Ulbrich is being sentenced to two life terms in the United States. So imagine the level of freak out that happens to Craig Wright when he is doxxed by force. And on top of that, not only do they go to these magazines, but on top of that, they go to the Australian tax authorities and they have the Australian federal police swat his businesses and his homes. And, and so, in my opinion, back then, what happened was that Craig Wright freaked out. I'm pretty sure that in his freak out, again, he's an autist person with, with Asperger's. I'm pretty sure um, these people with these atypical personality disorders, they are people that like patterns. They, they, they like their life organized. Mm. You completely took this mad scientist out of, some, out of his precious alter ego. You st stripped his alter ego away from him. And now he is n vulnerable to the world and what happens is is that he, he's just vulnerable and i imagine that he at that moment and he he claimed it at the at the at the at the, at the climate trial because there was a trial in florida a couple years ago on this case where ira sues craig wright for saying he is satoshi and my brother was too and he owes us money mm. so so the 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 claimant the the accuser was saying he's a satoshi and he owes me money and with proof i have it here um so craig wright has been has was doxxed um violently taken out and and so i'm pretty sure he, he deleted a lot of evidence of him being satoshi have you guys a lot of uh, hackers you know guys that are into privacy they go through this whole thing called wiping out once in a while they just clean they destroy computers and they wipe everything out. Um, I'm pretty sure Craig Wright did a lot of that. 
I don't know to what extent he did, but he, he did say he stomped on hard drives, is, is the famous quote. Um, can only imagine. Can I interject right yeah, there? Yeah, of course, man. So yeah, go for it. My understanding is the way, the reason he stomped on, he stomped on a, a hard drive because it was allowed him to access a file that he believes you use a key and you're done. So when he stomped on the hard drive, he didn't need it anymore because he had already proven. Now, we got to remember that Craig Wright, um, he already signed for several people. He signed for Gavin Andreessen, right, and, and a few others. And he did that privately because he wanted to prove who he was to other people. He didn't really want to do it. There's videos you can go back and watch. He was very uncomfortable. But once this creation was sidetracked by Blockstream, okay, where they limit it to one megabyte, they shut down the opcodes, all right? Slowed, he, it, slowed it down. Exactly. They, they handicapped it, you know. And so today, as we sit here today right now, Bitcoin BTC can do seven transactions a second. Bitcoin BSV, which Craig Wright was able to restore, can do two million transactions. And is a the this is you regard this as this is the original. It, this what, is what, what it was intended to be. This is Bitcoin, and the reason it's Bitcoin, it has the original protocol going straight through. There was a fork in 2017 that went from Bitcoin to Bitcoin Cash, and then later on, Bitcoin Cash forked off into BSV because Dr. Craig Wright, and primarily Dr. Craig Wright, and Roger Ver, who is known as Bitcoin Jesus, who did a lot of amazing things in the space, and who I met here in, in Acapulco years ago, disagreed. And what, what uh, Roger Ver wanted to do was increase the block size, but keep it limited to 8 megabytes or 32 megabytes. Now, I sold computers in the, early, in the 80s. So there's no reason, there's no security reason to increase block size. Like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a PSYOP to say that. And so basically, then BCH went into BSV and then it split off. And, and, he, and Craig Wright has proved it. And, and uh, you know, when you talk about Turing complete, he, he was 100% right. And so what's interesting now for me to come back, because I was out of the space for a while, and I've talked to you about it before, you know, I had a very serious accident, and I was gone for, you know, three or four years, and now I'm back in the space. And then I come along, then there's some very interesting people. So you have Craig Wright and Calvin Ayer. Calvin Ayer's the billionaire who, who helped save it. They're, they're like the original two people. But then you have a group of young guns, I'm going to call them, very, you know, they're, they're all, they didn't grow up with the internet, you know, they probably didn't have cell phones when they were young. And Raphael's one of them. Um, and there's two others. I'm going to let Raphael talk about it because they're actually, and the way Raphael explained this to me, it makes perfect sense. Well, we, what I was doing and what I've been doing is trading Bitcoin, which is like a suitcase, a, a computer. Like we're trading pink computers for blue computers or whatever, and we're making money as the price goes up and we can trade these computers. But no one did anything to turn these computers on and use them. And, and Raphael has, hasn't said it yet. But in 2023, Raphael and these other, these other two guys and, and a few others that are behind the scenes, they turned the dang computers on. So Raphael learned how to do that with BSV, and then he took it, and he applied it to BTC, and he applied it to Dogecoin and, and some others. So he's teaching these people how to follow what Craig Wright gave us. Let, let, let's let's pick up on that thread in a moment but sure. be before we do that just just reiterate what what are the charges or what what is the trial of craig wright so here's the trial the, of the craig defendant wright. the plaintiff and and what would the the verdict okay likely end up okay as? to me it doesn't matter what or the just, verdict is and i'll just tell you why. explain the do you want me to take it yeah go ahead okay, so, okay go ahead all right so um this is really the reason why mike invited me to talk about this because um Oh, by the way, about, about what Mike said, I'm not a programmer. I'm just an enthusiast. Um, there is, there's, and it's just not three guys. It's a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. uh, BSV literally has more developers than BTC. Uh, and yeah, because in BTC, they don't allow anyone to do anything. That's why you have to do it uh, in a sly way like we did in 2023 with ordinals. But let's go back to the trial. So what happens is, is that this entire world of big tech um, has been struggling with the with the desire of creating what they call Web three, a more interconnected internet. Okay, if you take the world of technology and you visualize it in your mind, all of technology as a giant kitchen full of beautiful ingredients, 
you then realize, well, I can go into that world and I can grab ingredients and make recipes, right? That's what Satoshi did. He grabbed the best ingredients possible and he created the most incredible recipe to have internet money. And he discovered many things along that process. And, he, and the sacred recipe that Satoshi discovered is composed of three factors. Number one is proof of work. Number two is the blockchain design as the topological graph that interconnects people best to each other. And number three is the UTXO model. So, Satoshi bought, brought this together and... and uh, I mean, I don't have to, I don't want to, I don't want, we don't have time for me to get into every intricacy. But this is, this is the key for what they want to do, what Facebook has been wanting to do uh, with Libra, what the Boston Fed has been wanting to do with Project Hamilton and the CBDC. They literally are, they know, everyone knows that Bitcoin in its original design has the architecture to scale horizontally in parallel like any big tech giant like google amazon facebook and I, you know a lot of people are probably asking me what does that mean to scale horizontally like i might say things i'm gonna tell you you're gonna have to look it up because i don't have time to give you a class on what that means but it's, it's reasonable scaling where i don't have to like if i, if I had a bus i don't gr have to ch tech check the bus into the into the shop to grow the size of the bus if i get more clients i just buy more buses that's horizontal scaling, only proof of work, and only, specifically, the UTXO model allows you to do that. The vast majority of the crypto space was kept ignorant of these things for the past decade on purpose. Why is that? Because it allowed big tech to catch up. It allowed finance to catch up to the threat that is Bitcoin. The truth is, is that they realized that they won't ever be able to catch up. Satoshi, after he is docs, he's no longer talking like an anarchist when he was behind the, the veil of privacy, where he completely let go of his, of his, he was able to let go of his alter ego completely. Post doxing, Dr. Craig Wright speaks as a minarchist objectivist, like a Randian. But the difference between an, a Randian and an anarcho capitalist is their points of inflection for what private property is. So for the Anarcho capitalist, the point of inflection for private property is physical space. It's physical. I own it here, physical. It's mine. It's physical space. The point of inflection for the objectivist is intellectual property. Craig Wright does the pivot because he's wise, he's smart. He can't, now that he's docs as, as being Satoshi, he can't, and, and he just saw Ross Ober get served two life sentences. He can't just say, hey, I'm going to. Uh, Complete new being and you know Jeff Perwick part, part two. No, 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 no. He has to play it smart. He has to play it smart. So he pivots to a Randian presentation and he shows how in reality he won't use these words. But in reality, these this is what it is. Bitcoin in itself is an honesty machine, a truth ledger, the lib the eternal library of Alexandria, and the book that can never be burnt. I call it the book of life. That's what Bitcoin is. It was never supposed to be a privacy coin. It's a, it's, a, it's a place that enforces honesty. And within that, in the section two of the white paper, you have the chain of digital signatures where every single transaction from wallet to wallet, even if it's not attested by the miners before it goes to the blockchain, enters into a contractual state with each other. There's a legal contract, free market contract aspect to all this with every single transaction. There is a cryptographic signature that is can be used to be represented in any type of arbitration or legal system. The legal system that dominates the world right now is one that is communist in design. It's centralized. Why is it communist? Because it's, it comes from the centralization of the nation state. We all understand that. But humanity has not been able to produce something better. But as time goes on we will have better systems of arbitrage that are more efficient scalable faster cheaper than that which government can offer and bitcoin fits any system of arbitrage okay 
Let it's me, universal. Let me interject for a minute. Sure, sure. I'm going to get back to your question. Well, I, I'm not done with my point. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm so sorry. Uh, let no, me, that's let me, okay, because we want to stay right on this question. No, no, I, and that's why I'm going back to, to I was just making this point. Please. Um The point, oh, fuck. <laughs> I think you're building up. You're building up to the background. His mind is so to, to, no. to, to why Craig writes kind of on trial and why it's important. Yeah, why exactly. It's important. So this is the point, guys. Yeah. So what happens is is that everyone in big tech wants Web three, and now we get to see Team Satoshi bring the vampires out into the light. The vampires of big tech. So who's behind the Copa side of the case? Is Facebook, Sam Altman, OpenAI. Jack Dorsey, the creator of Twitter, and that entire lizard cartel of and Big all Tech. the exchanges, all the exchanges, yep, literally, Coinbase, Kraken, all, all of the, them, all of the. You guys have to understand that who controls Big Tech are people that are hidden. Literally, is like a deep state, but like deep tech. It's not the, even the managing partners of these venture capital funds. It is the limited partners who call the shots, who are the real investors, and they're hidden figures. You'll never know who they are. They're like the bondholders. They're the real They're the real guys, and they all have a stake in all of the venture capital funds. They, they run, and some of them are the fund of funds, right? Um, and something very important that I, I want to mention is um, they tried really hard to create Web3 on their own, but they know that the recipe, the only recipe deep down that is capable of offering what they want as Web3 is what Satoshi created in its original design, Bitcoin, meaning the technology only held by BSV right now. Craig Wright being smart, what he started doing is that he saw IBM, Alibaba patenting all of these technologies and he himself and the entity Enchain started patenting these things. In my opinion, now this is my all, my speculation, based on everything that I tell you, what I think this whole Copa trial is about is to discredit Craig Wright as Satoshi, so then they can go after his patent, his IP, and discredit that as well. Otherwise, if they were ever to use, if they ever were to use his technology, they would have to pay royalties to Craig Wright, the creator of it, in my opinion. The real reason that this is very important is because the reason why Bitcoin Bitcoin fits into Internet Protocol version 6, IPv6, mm -hmm. that is Web3. And that's really what these guys are after. And they don't want... And so... And that, tell them what that is. IPv6 is... Okay, IPv6. Yeah. Let, so he's doing a great job of talking about it. But I, being an older guy, I'm going to talk more on the corporate world so that, you know, the people who are older want to understand exactly from their, the way their mind thinks, right? Because our, our mind at different age thinks different ways. So as he got into IPv6, so IPv4 was the standard way that computers talk to each other, and it's been around for years. IPv6 was created maybe 20 or 30 years ago. What does it allow? Well, it allows micropayments. So it's the cash, okay? When Bitcoin was first created, they, there was a, they used in the old protocol, the HTTP IP protocol, there was a place for digital cash to be in there. And IPv6 and the, and the current person who is now, let's say, the head of the IPv6 protocol program is working with BSV. IBM is building on BSV right now. Like, they are building so many things because what does IPv6 allow? It allows micropayments. What does that mean? Well, that means that computers can talk to computers. Big, huge farms will be able to give plants exactly what they need, the nutrients, the water. Then, then machines will come by, and they'll be paying each other. It won't be me paying you, Mike paying. You Mach know. Machine to machine. It'll be machine to machine and the microwave. Right now, I can send a Bitcoin, either a penny or a million dollars, to anyone anywhere in the world, and it costs me a fraction of a fraction of a penny. One if I do that thousandth on, of a penny. One fifty, thank you. If I do that on BTC... Okay, it might be a hundred dollars or twenty. It's ridiculous. And then people, I just had, we just did it yesterday. Where you know everyone's talking BTC, and so they're you know they're sending. They can't buy anything if it's if it's under you know five twenty dollars. I can send a penny. So that's let's go back to the white paper, and that's why they're going after Craig and trial, because you know in in a trial you have to answer the questions that's coming out. So the first seven days. Is Craig Wright being cross-examined? 
wait till he gets a chance to show his evidence. I mean, he could have watermarks behind this thing. I mean, this man has got 30 different degrees or more. He's the most knowledgeable person as recognized already by the court of London. Like, and so he's been doing so many things for so many different companies to securitize them. And he's been doing it for years. So this man's under an incredible amount of pressure, but look at him in the trial. He's wearing suits and, and it's, it's as hot as there in the trial as it is here. And, and this dude is sitting up and he's taking all of their stuff. Now it's his turn. This trial's gonna go on for a while. Yeah. Now he could lose this trial and it could go to the appellate trial. Of course, I know all about that because I, my business was about winning an appellate court when we lose at the district level. So if he, but just to be clear, if he loses, what would he be losing? And so if he loses, okay, so let's, let's, let's go back to the charges or what's happening. First of all, Craig Wright is not suing anybody. COPA, which is the Crypto Open Patent Alliance, they're suing Craig Wright because he has so many patents and so many trademarks on all this technology and they want it. So they're suing him. Now before the trial even begins, Craig Wright publishes an open offer that says, okay, I'll tell you what, I won't enforce my all my rights. You can do what you want, BTC. You can do what you want, Bitcoin Cash. Leave, leave uh, BSV alone and we'll compete with you in the open marketplace. And you know what? I don't like to swear, but we're gonna kick your ass. That's basically what he's saying. And they, they, they're like, you know what? We know, we're going to trial. Sure. Because they're gonna try and prove you're not Satoshi. So they keep asking him time after time be, after time. Be, because they don't, want, they, don't want, they don't want that assist B, uh, BSV and B, original Bitcoin to be the adoption for Web3. They Is can't, that right? exactly. So let they me, want it let to me, be something else? You're right, so let, let's take it this way. When the internet first came out, right? China didn't want their people to have it. So what did they do? They built a great wall of China around the internet. Well, what did the people do? They went around it, right? They, you can't stop something whose time has come. And where you have now with Bitcoin, right, is a time for programmable money, a time for a truth machine, as Raphael has said, and there's not gonna be able to stop it. So even if he loses the trial, right, this is time has come, it's, it's released, you can't, bring the, the horses out of the barn. Mm -hmm. So, as, and, and I, I think we've talked about this earlier, February 4th of 2020 was the date that the Genesis upgrade to the BSV was completed. At that point, I knew, and I had my own personal problems, I had my own Genesis, you know. Um, and once that happened, that means, and then block sizes started taking off and it went from, you know, giga, megabytes to gigabytes and, and now we're at terabytes. And so everything Craig Wright talked about is now happening, despite the fact that they're going after him. So why are they going after him? Because the people who run the planet don't want it. Well, it's, uh Jeff Berwick said last night during his talk, he said that, that the, those big payment processing fees is one of the obstacles from it becoming an actual currency, it, you know, because that's a, that's a big obstacle, yeah, isn't it's, it? It's right. not even a big obstacle, it's a barrier. And, and, you and you're, you're talking about this this system would elim, you know, pretty much eliminate well, that. It's the real Bitcoin. It's yeah. that simple. So, yeah, you and know, it's for, out there. For us, you know, for us original Bitcoiners, um, and I consider my, an actual real Bitcoiners, we take everything that Satoshi gave us into account. Mm -hmm. We don't impose our will on the network and on the way he gave us as a gift and tried to impose our will on it and make of it what we want. No, no, no. That's what they did in BTC. That's what they did in Bitcoin Cash. And it's just like, man, it's just, it's honestly like, there's me saying that makes me like, like at this moment, um, almost like mentally numb like i can't believe that these assholes had the audacity to not see this for the gift that it was and well they did see it rough they don't want it they because don't they have it. control the, the, so. gift, the gift you're talking about is peer-to-peer -peer and, and not through middlemen exactly and even real more money. than that yeah real not, money but it's not just okay but it's not just money it's it's Satoshi didn't give it's us the start money. of it. it's the beginning it's the beginning it's, it's a we used to call it money as the first application of the bitcoin protocol yes for us the bitcoin protocol in its totality is bitcoin and the, and the fullness of the bitcoin protocol is only exists in bsv right now 
We don't think of Bitcoin as the taker symbol that the lizards control on the exchanges. That's BTC, that's Bitcoin Cash. We don't care about that. We care about Bitcoin as the protocol. Bitcoin is the original protocol. And the thing is, is very well, who are up against Craig Wright? We are seeing firsthand who are the people that literally went up against the real Bitcoiners and Satoshi himself. Who were the people that we, the vampires were brought out into the light? Who are those vampires? Look at the Super Bowl. Who was at the Super Bowl? Mark what, what Zuckerberg. Yeah, at the, at the Super Bowl. You had yeah. Jack Dorsey, the creator. With, with Satoshi on his with shirt. With Satoshi on his shirt. Doxing. Like, like literally, like, like cameras on him all arrogant. the time. Sitting, sitting next to Super Bowl. That? Yeah. Satoshi. Sitting said. next to Beyonce well, and Jay Z. During the court, during the what an Super asshole. Bowl. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Jack Dorsey, the founder of, 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 of Twitter, Jeez. sitting at the Super Bowl, sitting next to. Beyonce and Jay-Z wearing a t-shirt that said Satoshi, arrogantly poking at us and saying, ha ha, I'm suing Satoshi, because that's really what he's doing. These people are evil. These people don't want you to be free. These people want to enslave you. And Bitcoin is the only way to free humanity, guys. It is our market-driven offensive weapon where value goes in a spiral of positivity through a meritocracy of proof of work and nothing else in crypto compares to that what's the next best thing that we have in crypto are privacy coins and what do privacy coins do well hide are you just gonna hide the rest of your life hide mm -hmm. evil will still happen around you and what are you gonna do hide in the cave let me let me add on that that's not me i'm not one to hide right so look binance Craig Wright called out CZ from Binance and said exactly what he was doing, that he was funding terrorism, and Binance was one of the largest exchanges. Well, where is he today? Well, he's in federal custody. He's already pled guilty, and Binance is gone. Well, Craig Wright said that. Go back and look at it. He called him, he called him out. So, like, it's funny how people forget history. They forget about this this block size debate that I lived through and that Rafael lived through where they you know wanted to keep it to one megabyte and we split in 2017 into Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash and then in 2018 into Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV. They're not talking about those things anymore because Craig Wright's already proven them wrong. He's already scaled. They said it would never scale. Go back and look. Oh, it'll never, I mean, all of them, that'll never scale. It'll never work. Now it works. And not just that, but like the younger generation that you brought up, you know what we did in 2023? We went into BTC and literally murdered the small blocker narrative. They were not expecting the younger generation, not the Calvin Ayers and Craig Wrights, the younger generation to go into BTC and whatever was left of computational capabilities within BTC on chain and capacity to arbitrage data on chain, we went in with ordinals in 2023 and we activated and created marketplaces that live on chain. Even though they're expensive, we treated them as entrepreneurs as, you know, like, okay, it's just, we're going to go open up a shop in Fifth Avenue. You're not going to sell coffee. You'll sell Gucci bags. And that was the mindset. So tell we them made. how much money you made your investors. What was the percentage gain? Um, that time? Well, in the best asset already, the first uh, fungible token, it was 88,000 88, percent gains. 88,000 percent. 88,000 percent. Yeah. And we're talking three months. And, and yeah, in less than three months. You're talking about NFTs mainly? No, no. I'm talking no. about um, ordinals. Ordinals. ordinals and different the from first NFTs. ordinal token already. And what percentage of the blockchain is the ordinals now consuming on the BTC blockchain as far as transactions? Um, regularly, it's, it's usually over 50 percent. It's now over 50 percent is um, of these transactions are ordinals transactions, on-chain transactions. And it's been over 70 and for uh, and, and sometimes when we get really happy uh, it goes over 80 percent easily so what happened at the end of 2023 jack dorsey the same guy that was mocking us at the super bowl sitting next to jay-z and beyonce that same demonic force he freaked out he wasn't expecting that he okay this was crazy is is that he thought he was like haha we got the propaganda because we control media we control big tech we already have the whole world thinking craig wright is a fraud right at, at anarchopulco people here that are critical thinkers they don't they see through all that's that bullshit right. they yeah. see through all that bullshit that's why that's why best people here you see are bsv if they're bitcoiners they're bsv people Believe it or not, that's what you see at an Arco Anyways, but I digress. So, I'm sorry, what was, what was I saying? Um, so, yeah, um, so at the end of 2023, Jack Dorsey freaks out. He gets together with a programmer 
literally admits that he eats cats. Okay, <laughs> Luke Dasher. Literally, this, this guy literally eats cats, and he they create a mining pool to censor ordinal transactions on chain native marketplace transactions that happen on the BTC blockchain. So they're trying to stop you. They're trying to stop us. Right. But in order for them to stop us, because they're communists, they would have to tell other miners that that, that in order that they should do this, which would cause them to lose money. It would be an opportunity cause. Um, so by, by all means, try to do it. You know what happened? It flopped. Two days after they launched, that they we're going to stop this ordinal thing. They have to themselves process ordinal transactions. At the same time, we got to BTC and we were like, we're ready. We are ready. Where is the Lightning Network? Let's go. And what these, these programmers have from BTC with the Lightning Network after eight years of propaganda and hundreds of millions of dollars of investments, they had nothing, nothing. So much so was the economic pressure for BTC on-chain scaling and from the Ordinals marketplace that the top three developers rage quit on the Lightning Network. They rage quit. They rage quit. So you're saying that so, li the Lightning thing was a lot, mostly hype? It was, oh, oh. It, it, was, it was doomed to failure. Have they, have they, have they delivered? What have they delivered? Let so me talk far? about that. Let, let me take oh, a look. But just on quickly that. on that and okay, get back yeah. to the main point. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, they haven't delivered anything. That's what he's saying. So the Lightning Network was designed to be second layer payments. And it went off of the primary network, which you never should have done. And by the way, Blockstream... It was, it was, it was promised that it would speed up uh, yeah, uh, transactions of by buy orders of, of magnitude. Yeah, right? and, but what they did is they opened a channel, and it made it quick, but it made it totally unsecure. It were hack vectors everywhere, yeah. and now it, it's already been trashed. They spent millions of dollars developing it, and it's nothing. Now, but what else does Blockstream do? See, what Blockstream does is by, by promoting these side chains and stuff, they, if you want to transact in Bitcoin and you want to use the Lightning Network, you get to pay them. You get to pay them for their hardware and stuff like that. So they're making money. See, they're making money off of Bitcoin. They don't want these cheap transactions. So, and they're also, Blockstream is totally dependent on the original subsidy of Bitcoin. And the subsidy of Bitcoin is the reward that comes out every 10 minutes. And it was, Craig Wright explained it that this subsidy was supposed to decrease over time just like you know the country subsidized their their industries like Samsung was got in Korea and I'm sorry um, where's Samsung from yeah, yeah, I think is it South Korea, Korea. I think South, South Korea and of course they're the biggest one of the biggest companies in the world so the subsidy goes away so the having keeps happening and so the real money long-term money from Bitcoin is supposed to come from transaction fees so if you've got billions and billions of transactions mm. and there's a tiny little fee, and so you and I, when we want to watch the internet, we don't want to watch ads popping up on Facebook all the time. We want to watch. And if I want to watch 10 minutes, I don't mind paying a penny. If I want to watch an hour, I don't mind paying three pennies or five pennies or whatever I think that's worth. But as soon as I cut out, and that's all done with IPv6 and BSV, BTC can't touch that. And quite frankly, none of the privacy coins can either because they don't have the network effect. The networked effect of Bitcoin is eventually the entire world is going to, the entire internet is going to ride on top of the Bitcoin network. In other words, it puts all the lizards out of business. Exactly. Like the biggest, They're done. The biggest, okay, so the, every, all the libertarians understand the, 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 the evil of central banking. Um, but central banks and banks themselves are nothing but tech companies now. Over 94% of the U.S. dollar is digital. Mm -hmm. So when people fear the CBDC, well, the CBDC is already here. What you're fearing is big data that's tagged along with the digital ID. That's what you're fearing. Okay, that's what you're fearing. But when you take the power from big data away from these hub and spokes networks, that's the network topology of big tech, they're hubs with spokes. Centralized. Centralized, yes. Yeah. And you give it to a market-driven capitalist meritocracy that has the most mathematically sound interconnected graph called the blockchain that scales horizontally with the UXTXO model, meaning Bitcoin in its original design, BSV, 
You take that power away from them completely. You do more than that. You turn the light instead of just on us all the time where they're monitoring everything we do. Now we see you. Exactly. And they hate accountability. So they know they're running scared. That's right. I mean, when you see these guys that are running each country or whatever, they get out and they're being egged and they're they're you know, they're hiding. Yeah, honestly, They're hiding. Yo, to be, and, and this is something that like a lot of people, the older generation within BSV, the more enterprise guys, the guys that are like with patents and stuff, they won't say this, but I have the freedom to say it. And this is just my opinion because again, they're very Randian. They're very Randian. Explain Randian. Randian, again, that the locus of private property is it found in intellectual property, meaning that in intellectual property, so they are, they want some government. They are minarchists. They're not anarchists. But within BSV, there are anarchists as well, like myself, that say, okay, well, that aspect, that last aspect of of, of assuring contracts that the, minar- that the minarchist and uh, Randian wants to be assured of intellectual property could be served by the best, by, could be, we could live in a world where that could be served better by the free market. Has that solution been developed right now? Uh, not 100%. Yeah. I mean, we have had mercantile law in the past. Right. So it's not outside of the purview of, of, of the context of something humanities have lived. We've had legal systems that have been decentralized and market-driven. Mercantile law was, was that. So could that be revived with the internet and with Bitcoin? Yes. Um, but what I will say is this. That Murray Rothbard said it best. You will never have complete freedom, anarchy, without m- capitalism. Capitalism is a necessary precursor to that. You need both. So BSV, in my opinion, is the most revolutionary technology that we have. Again, a privacy cleaning only allows you to hide. This puts the emphasis on li- for us to live in an honesty-driven world. And people in power that are doing bad things hate to be held accountable. Accountability is what they detest. They can live with a Monero. They can live with a pirate chain. They can live with a Daryl. It's okay. It's private. They love privacy. Privacy is what they use themselves to be not be held accountable. But once we have a network that is honest by default, and if you read the white paper, the adjective that Satoshi uses to describe nodes mining is honesty. Yeah, and, and proof more, of work. And more than that. People want anonymous. And Satoshi says, no, no, no. It's pseudonymous. Your privacy matters. You don't want other people knowing what you're doing. But if you think the government's not going to come and shut you down, they're going to shut you down. The Liberty Dollar and all those things that Craig Wright knew about, they got shut down worldwide in a, in a takedown by all the governments at the same time. And that guy got put in jail. So government has power. So it's not about being anonymous. It's being pseudonymous. Okay, but see, this is where I digress with someone like Michael because he's of like an older generation than, than us. Um, the thing is, is that you're completely right as the world exists right now. Yes. The thing is, is that Bitcoin in its design is a, has, is a meritocracy that incentivizes freedom and for you to live in a more free way, just way. Um, libertarian is nothing more than this philosophy of decency. Of decent men coming together that are so decent and they adhere to the non-aggression principles so well that they don't need daddy government to tell them how to behave with each other. Let me ask you a question. Sure. Because I agree with you. What what I was saying is that tyranny is disincentivized more and more as time goes on. So, therefore, as to your point, which was? Well, I can't think right now because I just went to this question, so I'm sorry. Yeah, so, your point was that you still... Need anonymous, and you that, can't okay. suit anonymous, right? The, Those two the, things. The thing is, is that Bitcoin, if you... Bitcoin will give you, at a scale, will give you so much privacy that would be almost anonymous. That, almost, that, yes. that, And this it would be... Pseudonymous. Across, exactly. That would be... It'd become so big and so fast because I can literally... You, uh, to start off in BSV, you can use any type of ins- encryption, any type of zero knowledge proof, any type of homomorphic encryption on chain, something that no other privacy coin can do. Why is that? Because it's unbounded in scaling, it scales horizontally, meaning that we can play with different types of cryptography and privacy protocols at the same time. Pirate chain has to marry ZK snarks. 
And that is what so, they do. ZK if you smarts. don't mind, let me get back to this this topic. They're homomorphic encryption. We're talking about with like, BSB, I can do all of them at the same time. Yes. Yeah. You see what I mean? So, so like democracy. And we talked about democracy. Like, there's a book, and it was written by a gentleman. And and if you really want to know what democracy is, you can read it. The gentleman's name is Harold Waldman Percival, and the book is called Democracy is Self Government. When you govern yourself, you don't need, and that's where the world is going. We're not there right now. We're not there exactly. So we, I agree we got with you, governments yes. that are taking control. We got people who aren't governing themselves. When people govern themselves and they follow their own personal responsibility, they don't need government. Exactly. But we're we're as a species, we've been governed, and we can't we cannot take what other people have because we're jealous of them. When we no longer are jealous, and when we look to ourselves, and we meditate, and we breathe, and we try to do the right thing. And when the more and more people do that, then democracy will take over. True democracy, not the one one vote where all of a sudden the majority rules like what we have. And then the people who are tyrants and tyrants will take over. And that's what you have in all these countries. No, no, we got a long way to go for self-democracy. So we have to deal with where we're at now. We're in a exactly. world where there's governments and those governments have power. And we need to do what our founding fathers did. And we need to beat them at their own game we need to talk about what's right and hold them accountable and bitcoin will hold them accountable because it's a truth machine and that accountability will make their influence over us less and less and less but it will take time and Thank sound you. sound money sound so money digital real money. digital gold digital um, cash something that you can have custodianship over yes um, yeah, correct. as well and so there's the difference between fiat money which is totally opaque um, completely dishonest. So, by the way, fiat money and the history of fiat money, and there's books you can get on it. No fiat money's currency has ever survived. And there's a book, you know, two inches thick, that you know, and the and the uh, the petrodollar is on its last legs. So you're saying, ones. getting to that, getting towards a better form of democracy, uh, you need uh, to have honest money. Yeah, and we'll think about it. One hundred percent. Yes. And can can, um, can yeah, I go ahead. Go point? ahead. So what's what's ha well. Jeff Burke and I were having this conversation yesterday, and he's like, Raph, if there was a button that I could press to have anarchy right now, I would not press it because people are not ready for it. Yes. Okay, so we need economic incentives to drive not just those in power, but all of us to be more decent with each other. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin invites everyone to compete. Bitcoin is original design. Everyone to compete. Transaction fees are so cheap that I can subsidize the whole planet to, to use the blockchain for 400 bucks. For 400 bucks at one fifty thousandth of a penny, I can have everybody posting things on chain and getting paid for it in Bitcoin right now. Right now. In Bitcoin's original design, BSV. Yeah. So, so when we, are not, if we change human incentives through the, a free market competition that is based on honesty. That's what Satoshi gave us. So yes, it will take time, and I think Bitcoin is uh, in, does not just enforce honesty, but it also changes us from within. Yes. Hey, well, what's the big conscience? Uh, your, yeah, oh, my definition. Your definition. <laughs> Give him your definition. <laughs> Give him your definition of what. Okay. Yeah, what, I love you're this reading definition. This last guys. night. All right, here it is. Yeah. Big conscious. Okay, so I came up with this a few months ago. Big conscious defined, and I and I put it on what is it? Slackery or what is that? Uh, uh, slictionary. Slictionary. Okay. Yes. Okay. Big conscious. The knowledge that Bitcoin will usher in a new age of enlightenment where individuals known as Illuminis will become a bit more conscious of consciousness and bring forth a real democracy where each person practices the art of self-control and self-discipline. And it was written by? Me. It was you. Not, not, That's me. Not an AI chatbot. Not, not an AI chatbot. Mike this Middleton. Is, this is Mike Middleton. AI is not that smart, guys. <laughs> AI is pretty dumb. Right, so I put this word into AI and got nothing. I mean, they, not for long, though. Yeah. So we'll, it, you can feed this by way into AI because I've been playing with it with uh, Ryan X. Charles, who was, you know, so Ryan X. Charles is another very interesting person because he was with Craig Wright and he created um, uh, a whole series called um, The Theory of Bitcoin. And he, he actually, at one point, cre uh, compared Craig Wright to Jesus Christ. Right? <laughs> That's a little too much, but yeah, sure. Well, but you know, I mean, he, I don't know. I'm just, he just, he said, could he be? Because he was bringing something to humanity, right? So anyway, the comparison was made, but now he's into AI stuff and I'm finding it very interesting. So, you know, everyone pivots to where they're going. Um, well, look, just, just to pull it together, because yeah. um, we're going to wrap it up in Let's a couple of minutes at the top of the hour. But okay. um, I'm going to give both of you the floor uh, to just kind of give it, so you wrap up on this. 
I'll go to you first, to okay, Mike, and then to Raf after that. But go okay, ahead. so what I'm going to say is for those of you who are interested, um, and how are you going to, like if you want to follow the trial, you know, there's, there's certain people out there. I'm going to give a few plugs to people. There's a gentleman you can follow on Twitter. His name is Sir Toshi, right? And, and he gives Sir really, Toshi. Sir Toshi, right? There's another one named Gavin Mayo. And each one of those guys are following the trial. They're giving the updates. They're trying to be as objective and fair as they can about what's going on. The other thing is, how do you get BSV? That is very difficult to do right now. Now, I know there's a, there's a where I'm able to get it now, because I still have some, because I converted it. But there's a program, and I don't know where it's available and what the restrictions are, but it's called MyCoinify.com. Because people are out there, they want to know how, okay, this is great, but what do I do? How can I get some? Right? And if you can get each Bitcoin has a hundred million Satoshis. And we're gonna be interacting in Satoshis. You're gonna need Satoshis to do things. Right? And I talked about this earlier. Like if you wanna be a trillionaire, you could like have a trillion hot dogs, you could have a we all are trillionaires, we have a trillion cells in our body or more, right? So you would need how many Bitcoin to be a trillionaire? Well if there's a hundred million uh, Satoshis, right, in each Bitcoin, you would need ten thousand Bitcoin. But BTC, BCH, the real Bitcoin is BSV. And you can get it today for about 80 bucks. So if you got that kind of money, but good luck trying to buy it anywhere. It's going to be very difficult. Just be clear, BSV stands for? Bitcoin Satoshi Vision. Vision. And, and, and you know, we're here with, with Anarchapulco, which is the dragon. And we're, we're now in the, in the year of 2024. This is, you know, the, what's the theme again? Um, reborn. Reborn. And, you know, it's the, the, the dragon is the Satoshi thing and the phoenix. All that is, is, is just coming together at the same time. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my buddy, Raphael. Um, okay, guys. So um, the people who are focusing on beyond the trial... Um, and really focusing on just a BSV Bitcoin as the technology and growing on chain open source and interoperable. Those people, the smartest of Bitcoiners are found in hodlocker.com. Hodlocker.com. Get to know it. How do you spell the, the first part of that? Hodl, like H O D L O C K E R.com. Huddle, huddle locker. Yes. yes. Shout out to Jack Lou, a very important Bitcoiner, and to Daniel Krawitz, who we nearly called the, the emperor of Bitcoin. Yes. Um, who are, Came up with hyper Bitcoinization. Yes. He's the father of real Bitcoin maximalism. He's the father of the term hyper Bitcoinization. And that's why we call him the emperor in dearly. Um, and so, so yeah. Uh, Bitcoin is abundant. Crypto, Bitcoin is abundant. It's complete abundance. It's complete light. It's okay if you love privacy coins. I love privacy coins. I think they're great tools for those who need them. There are people in the world, we're talking about the world as it exists right now. There's yes. people that are living under tyranny right now mm -hmm. that need to escape. And you know what? Don't use a Bitcoin or something derived of a Bitcoin protocol. You need something that is private by default. It's people that need privacy. Give some examples. Monero. What Monero. Else? Pirate Chain, Dero, mm -hmm. the most private right now is actually Pirate Chain. Okay. Still, more private than Dero, more private than Monero. Uh, Monero's trying to uh, catch up, but it's gonna have it's gonna take them a good two years because they're very conservative. They they they're very they they're very methodical. They take their time, and so we are at the cusp where we are realizing that Bitcoin is only as smart as we are. Bitcoin is a swarm intelligence. It's more important than AI. Bitcoin is more powerful than an AI because it is an AI, a swarm intelligence that serves us. When what we put on the blockchain, whatever it may be, our computational power, our ideas, our creativity on chain, which I just explained to you guys that it is free to do on BSV, that is going to mirror back to us who we are because now you're you're sharing that gift of you to the blockchain for the rest of the world to connect with you in a way that we've never been able to connect before and this is what the lizards and big tech fear the most this is why the vampires have come out into the light <laughs> and they've gone to war in court 
right now in London against Satoshi Nakamoto himself and his team. So I ask you guys, watching this, because I think prayer stands beyond time. Mm -hmm. Prayer is something that goes to the divine. Prayer is something that is not within the continuum of space and time. You can go, you can pray for people in in, in past in the past, because it goes out of sight of time. You can pay. For, you can pray for your grandpa and grandma. <laughs> Literally, uh, that their first date was great is my belief, right? So you can pray, pray for this trial that the best outcome may come about it from it, that Satoshi may be able to defeat these lizards in court, and that um, peace, prosperity, and freedom may may be something that can find its fullness within Bitcoin. Because guys, they're not attacking the 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 network that has has been attacked the most in crypto history has not been monero has not been pirate chain has not been Dero. it's been bitcoin in its original design now known Shake as bsv right Shake because it matters good job because this is this well is said. really the revolution here guys so help us with prayer i really thank you guys that's a good one mike Raphael, appreciate you guys joining us it's been a good great conversation and uh, enjoy the rest of and, your, and Patrick thank you for making this I mean you've been really nice to me specifically down here you know I got to know you you know uh, we got to know each other down at the, at the when we were out last night but you do such a really good job you know and you're just you're, you're giving everyone a, an opportunity to get to the stage and you're providing this technical service and, and I just want you to know it's really appreciated no it's uh that's our pleasure that's what we're here for this is about getting ideas sharing ideas educating people and uh, the way forward whichever that way is we'll find out very good yeah thanks. you're an amazing host thank you so much for having us no yeah. thanks it's absolutely my uh, pleasure and my honor hopefully uh, we'll keep the conversation going things are moving quick they are so we got to keep this conversation passed. above uh, and buoyant so people know about it so yeah you guys have been amazing okay anarcho poco 2024 another great conversation we're going to wrap up uh, this session today <laughs> and a big, thank you big shout out to our studio <laughs> audience <laughs> <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you guys, plenty of troublemakers in the house. Uh, all right, you guys. Thank you. Nice one. Thank you. Now we are dealing with a possible world war. Some will say we are already in a world war. My condolences and prayers go out to everyone suffering under tyranny. It really sucks. I'm really sorry. But it seems as if people are starting to wake up regarding crypto more and more each day. And so it's in the description right here to read where we give our secret sauce and what we teach our subscribers because things are just that bad. You know, everyone needs this information. People need to know about sound cryptocurrencies that are actually private by default and to know how to properly use crypto.